Welcome. Let's connect to the Aspen SPN 1624. Connect USB. We'll select the 1624. It appears in our window. We'll let the settings load. Okay, great. Now what we want to do is we want to navigate to rear panel control. Let's select that tab. And notice at the very top we have programmable input pin status. Now these are the 30 available programmable inputs. And if you connect a contact closure, one of our RCW PB8 push button panels, uh, this is a very quick way to test whether the hardware is working without having to assign a button to generate pink noise or to mute a particular input. You can visually see what's going on just by pushing the button to see if the hardware is actually working. So this is one of the things I really like. If we look at the RCW PB8, this is what it looks like. And that's what I'll be using. And we also have this DB to Cat5 adapter that'll take the two Cat5 cables that connect to the RCW PB8 and connect directly to the DB25 connector on the back. There's also six LEDs uh, that are available for programming and two LEDs underneath the bottom two buttons that are fixed as momentary LEDs and you can assign maybe volume up or volume down where you, all you would need is a momentary feedback showing you that you've pushed the button. So once I've connected to the 1624, if I push a button, notice that the little virtual LEDs come on as I push buttons. So I get immediate feedback that my hardware is configured properly. Now the rest of this is really easy. Notice now that we have hardware that's working, we can go to programmable inputs. So down at the bottom, we have all of the available 30 programmable inputs. And I have selected number one. This is the first programmable input that I would like to program. Now my options for programming are under this particular drop down menu. So you'll see currently it's not used. There's not a function assigned. But we have the ability to increment the input rear panel gain, decrement the input rear panel gain, output rear panel gain, decrement out, output rear panel gain, recall memory presets, toggle mute inputs, outputs, cross points, momentary mute inputs, outputs, and cross points. Uh, also momentary unmute inputs, which is a push to talk uh, setup. And then we also have increment cross point rear panel gain by 1 dB and decrement cross panel rear point gain by 1 dB. And then finally, run a macro on close, which we will talk about in the next section, and also run macro on close open. And you'll also notice that I skipped over the analog inputs and analog outputs. You can also hook up a 10K potentiometer to the rear panel input. And when you use the potentiometer, it gives you um, a nice sort of volume control over the rear panel gain and uh, that can be convenient as well. Okay, so now let's say that we select increment input rear panel gain by 1 dB. If I were to select that, notice that now I have all of the 16 inputs and, and these are the rear panel inputs, so they're attenuators. They go from 0 to negative 61 dB, or negative 61 dB is actually off. And also you have test inputs. And you can control any of these or any combination of these. So let's say that I choose channel number 1. Now my button, when I push programmable input number 1, I push the button and the contact closure is made, I will now be incrementing input rear panel gain. Notice also under the number one, I have the increment input uh, right below the II, and I have selected channel one. I could also select channel two and 11 and 13, or all of them in any combination that I choose. And now when I push that button, the rear panel gain will be incremented by one dB. 
Now also, if I push and hold the button, it will continue to increment in 1 dB increments as I'm holding once a second. And you can also, if you do not have a button that's uh, connected or a contact closure in place via hardware, you can press on the test button to make sure that the functionality is there. And that might be one of those scenarios where you're setting up, or you're on site actually, and you're setting up the box and you don't have the hardware connected and you want to see if uh, it's actually working. Okay, now, where do we monitor um, the effects of our selections? Well, notice we have channel 1, channel 2, 11, and 13. I'm going to go to rear panel gain control on the bottom tab. And here is the rear panel input gain and the rear panel output gain. Now, if I press on my button, notice nothing happens. And there's a reason for that. Remember, we're working with an attenuator. And that attenuator goes from 0 being the maximum to negative 61 dB. So if you were to assign this button, you would not see any effect because you are at the maximum limit. So let's go back to programmable inputs. And let's program our second button and we'll make that decrement. Let's go to number two. The function we would like is decrement input rear panel input gain by 1 dB. Let's select the same channels. 1, 2, 11, and 13. Okay, and we can quickly compare to see if those are the same channels. And they are. And notice the uh, decrement, the DI for decrement input. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go back to rear panel gain control. And I have button number two assigned to decrement. So as I push the button, notice 1, 2, 11, and 13 decremented by 1 dB. I'll continue to push the button. And I'll hold the button now. And you'll notice they will auto decrement. Now when I push button number one, they will start to approach zero again and we can increment all the way up to zero. Now, just that quickly, we have a button that will increment the rear panel gain and a button that will decrement the rear panel gain without any compiling. It just immediately works. Also notice, we have min gain and we have gain preset. Now, these are particularly helpful and here's why. Imagine a scenario where you've gone into a room and you've set up your input gain and your cross point gain and your output gain. And what you want to do is you want to set them up for the loudest you've ever you ever want the room to be. And once you've done that, you can set the gain preset to maybe negative nine or negative twelve dB or somewhere where you find the listening level to be the comfortable listening level because you've just set the actual gain structure to be the the loudest you ever want the room to be um, before feedback and now by adjusting the gain preset to a comfortable listening level at that point when you give control to the end user and they're controlling the rear panel gain the maximum that they can take this is to zero db which you have deemed already to be the maximum within the gain structure. And also, if you want to limit the, the lower level, right now it's currently off, meaning they can take it all the way down to a muted state. You can set this so that maybe you can just barely hear it, if that's something that you need. And now you've effectively set the lower limit range and the upper limit range. And to make that even better, you can do that per rear panel input. So select the one you want and maybe you need that capability. And uh, this gives you a tremendous amount of control. You get a lot less phone calls this way because what's happening now is you now have controlled the gain structure and the customer still has level control without being able to take it into feedback and then also they won't be able to take it be beyond a lower limit if you choose to set that. So that's the one thing that you 
want to remember uh, when you're setting up um, one of the Aspen boxes. Also, it's important that your programmer, maybe Crestron, AMX, Xantec, Control 4, whatever the, the system might be, you want to make sure that they are controlling rear panel gain and not the input gain. And you will have a system that is very, not only robust, uh, but also um, very tightly controlled uh, regarding gain structure, and they won't have the ability to take it into feedback. Okay, let's go on to the next section.